This is lab nine on the dog specimen. So we are finishing up our muscles today and we're working on apaxial muscles. And then we are going to flip the dog over to the other side and you'll have to do skin reflection again on the right side. And then we are starting on nerves and vessels on that side. So here we'll start with the muscles that we're doing. And so we have three systems of muscles. You have the iliocostalis system, which is that one. Then you have the longissimus system, which is the next one going up towards the back. So that'll be longissimus. And then you have transversospinalis, which is going to be the third system. So right here, here, that. So I know it's kind of silly, but I like mnemonics. And so the one I use for this one is I love tacos. So iliocostalis, longissimus, transversospinalis. If that works for you, great. If not, that's okay. So, iliocostalis, we'll start with that one. We have the iliocostalis lumborum. So you're going to have just the lumbar part, and that is fused with longissimus here. You don't need to separate them out. You don't need to cut into this fascia. That's just fine. So lumborum is right here. And then we have iliocostalis thoracis. So that's going to be all of this part here that has these tendinous parts going to the ribs. So that's thoracis. Okay, and then longissimus system, we have longissimus thoracis at lumborum. So that means going from the thorax all the way down to the lumbar area. So that whole thing is thoracis at lumborum. Then we also have a longissimus cervicis, which may be a little bit hard to differentiate exactly where it begins, but basically it's inserting on cervical vertebrae. So if you look at where it's going, so it's going to be in between the probe and the forceps will be the cervices portion of longissimus. Okay, then for the capitis, there's longissimus capitis, but usually what I do is I lift up, this is splenius, which is part of transversal spinalis system, and I actually lift up the edge of it, and then I look at my capitis, because it is kind of covering. So if you lift up splenius just a little bit, and then look for this capitis portion of longissimus, so right here. Longissimus capitis. So longissimus capitis, longissimus cervicis, longissimus thoracis at lumborum. Okay, then we have the transversal spinalis system. So we talked about splenius, which is this top part right here. So you will want to isolate the border and then cut splenius. I usually just make a cut across transversely there and flip that up towards the midline. And then we have the semispinalis capitis, is this whole muscle body here. And then semispinalis capitis is broken into two parts. You have uh, biaventer cervices, which is this dorsal aspect here, and then complexus, which will be this muscle down here. So biaventer cervices, complexus, making up semispinalis capitis, and then along with splenius, is our transversal spinalis system. Okay, so we'll flip this back up and then you're in the dog, you'll part the biventer and complexus. So just find the seam between them and split them apart. And you're looking for this nuchal ligament, which is this white elasticy tissue right here. So you're looking for that in the dog. Uh, the cat does not have one, so don't look for it in the cat. But in the dog, you'll wanna find the nuchal ligament. All right, now we have to flip over the specimen and start on our nerves and vessels. So I will flip the dog over this way. So you'll have to do the same skin incisions that you did before where you did the starting on the midline, coming up at the umbilicus and coming up behind the ear and then around the elbow. So same thing as the other side and just reflect the skin back if you can leave it attached, that's great. If not, you can just save it and then wrap your dog in it to keep it moist. Okay, so the nerves are very difficult, I'm not going to lie. So you have to be patient and we can't clean things as well as we did on the other side because you'll end up cleaning things that you need to find. So we don't clean off a lot of fascia, we just leave it and we kind of dig around it. Um, your little scissors that you have in your kit are actually going to be your best friend these little guys. 
So I usually take my scissors and a forceps and I just dig and do this little number. And so if you do that, you won't cut anything that you need and your nerves will stretch. They won't break. So if you use the scissors, that works really well for me. Okay, so you're palpating. What you're looking for is the wing of the atlas is your landmark for this beginning part. So once you find that, you're gonna go just caudal and ventral to that. And you're gonna start, like I said, with the scissors and just go in and spread them like that until you find some nerves coming out. See, it's that easy. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right, so here we have, this is coming off of the second cervical nerve. So this is the ventral branch of the second cervical nerve. And we have two little pieces that we can see coming out. So the second cervical nerve would be down there. And you have the great auricular is the main branch you wanna see going up to the back of the ear. So here's the ear right here. So great auricular. And then this smaller branch is uh, somewhat less important to find. It just is a transverse cervical nerve. And oftentimes it gets cut and reflected with the skin. So don't worry too much about that one. All right, and then we have, so the external jugular vein will be pretty obvious on your specimen or should be pretty obvious. So external jugular will be here and that should be easy to find. And then you're looking for mandibular lymph nodes. So you have to kind of take some of this platysma that we had reflected on the other side and reflect that forward. And you're looking for these mandibular lymph nodes right here and right here. So they're on either side of that lingual facial vein mandibular lymph nodes. Okay, then we're looking for the medial retropharyngeal lymph node, which can be hard to find in this dissection field. And your book is going to tell you to cut several things, one of them being the sternocephalicus. So typically I just kind of take off enough tissue to find whatever muscle it is and I'll, you know, isolate the borders. And then I cut it and you can, it tells you to cut your jugular also, so you could do that and that'll make this easier to reflect. So sternocephalicus, you cut and reflect that. And then, hopefully, if we can get a view of it, your retropharyngeal lymph node. There we go, there it is. Right here. It's right here. A big oval body. So that's the lymph node you're looking for once you reflect that sternocephalicus. All right, and then we have your superficial cervical lymph nodes, which we found on the other side again. So the book is going to tell you to cut your brachiocephalicus muscle. So you're going to find the borders a little bit of that and then cut and reflect that up towards the head. And you should be able to find uh, at least one, maybe more, superficial cervical lymph node right here, this oval body there. So superficial cervical lymph node right under the omotransversarius is right here. Then we have the accessory or 11th cranial nerve that we need to find. So after you reflect these muscles, it should make it a little bit easier. But if you do see another nerve in the same field going like that direction, that's the accessory nerve. That's not the great auricular. So you can see it's kind of going right by where C2 is coming out. So here's that cervical nerve we just saw. And here's the accessory nerve coming by that area. So you wanna try and find that and trace it a little ways if you can, because you reflected this and so you just keep following it. That's gonna go back towards the trapezius muscle back here. So that's the accessory or 11th cranial nerve there. And then we have the vagosympathetic nerve trunk, which should be pretty easy to find. So right next to your carotid artery, you just look for your carotid, and it'll be right next to it. It should be a big white nerve right there. And then the last part is a little bit more tricky. You're looking for the ventral branches of, of the third, fourth, and fifth cervical nerves. So we've already found C2, and you're looking for three, four, five. And so you go right under the edge of omotransversarius here, and you're going to just peel away some of those muscles and tissue, and you'll have one here, so that we can find, where's my two? There's two. So 
So here's two, here's C3, this would then be C4, and then way back here would be C5. So you're just looking for those nerves coming out of the muscle underneath. And I think that's it for lab nine.